Hey. That's the right tone. I feel like that's the right tone. Yeah. It's episode 56. That is how old I am. Mazel. Thank you. Not today. Yeah. Well, today and a lot of other days. Yeah, you are today. Yeah. Uh, It is episode 56 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. And it's it's a humdinger. Oh, my goodness. I really like this song. I... uh, I'm of two minds, and they both don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) Musically, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's great. It's very beautiful. Lyrically, I don't know, but Yeah, it's... I I kind of like it lyrically because it's a little different than most of the other stuff he does. So I I like it in that regard, in the regard that we're trying to do something different. It's off of Spring Harbor. Cold Spring Harbor. Cold Spring Harbor, yeah. First uh, one out of the box. And it is very, very pretty. Uh, I like it a lot, actually, for being so pretty. Before we get into it, I want to say, though, I went to L.A. this weekend again. Again with L.A.? Yeah, and this time I went and saw Weird Al. Oh, fantastic. And it was a great show. And I'm reminded, have you heard the song... Still Billy Joel to me by Weird Al. <laughs> I may maybe once a long time ago. Did he do it? Unreleased. Unreleased, yeah. It's on Dr. Demento. You can hear a recording of it, and it is maybe he just performed it live. And uh, a good way to describe it is mean spirited. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And I think that's why it ends up getting unreleased because most of the time when he does you know a parody it's gonna be about eating a thing or something and then it's yeah but this one is just (laughs) more or less it's to the tune of still rock and roll to me to let you know that he thinks i don't care what genre this is it still sucks (laughs) Uh, it's great. like our friend Pete Marietta wrote it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just, just mean, fairly funny. Yeah, and uh, it was just, I don't like Billy Joel. That's all it comes down to. Uh, I'm going to ask you a quick trivia question. Because uh, this, well, now what, do you know the name of the Billy, jo- the Billy Joel parody that Weird Al actually released? Because he only actually released one that actually is, and it's not mean-spirited. Oh, I don't think I do. It's weird that it's odd, I should say. <laughs> it's odd that he did it. Yeah. Because he did it relatively recently. So hmm. this is kind of a hint. Relatively recently, meaning it's a Weird Al release in the last 10 years. Right. Of a Billy Joel parody. But huh. you know, Billy Joel hasn't done a song in the last 10 years. No. It's so... Been- been much longer than that. I'll tell you the subject and see if you can guess. The <laughs> subject is Spider Man. <laughs> Was it a Piano Man parody? Yeah. Oh boy. Spin wow. us, spin us a web. You're the Spider Man. Oh no. There are a couple of good lyrics. There's uh, he says uh, how Uncle Ben will say, "With great power comes great responsibility." is the mantra of old Uncle Ben. But if you miss it this time, don't forget it. Don't worry. He'll say it again and again and again. So that's kind of funny. Okay, good observations. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, that's a weird choice. It must have been like a choice based on the fact that a million Spider-Man movies were coming out. It has to have been. And it had to also been, he felt like he had to do a Spider-Man song. Yeah. I feel like Weird Al has to probably be under the same constraints as every other musician, but the odd version. Like you got to have enough songs. Right. (laughs) So now you're going to kind of, okay, here, well, you got to have something else. Well, what else can I parody? I will bet his, the bane of his existence is being pitched ideas for songs. Yeah. You know, he, It's barely a good premise. (laughs) It only works because Weird Al is so great and charming. 
Yeah. And does have like pretty good jokes usually. His but originals they, like, changing the lyrics to songs. <laughs> that this particular tour was called like the Bad Idea Tour, and it was all originals, which I like his originals the best. Right. You know, now here's one more trivia question for you. Now that we do the Weird Al junk, uh, what's what's the one song somebody pitched him and he did it? Came a hit too. Wow, was that like a surgeon? Boom! I feel like I heard that. Yeah, I heard that somewhere. That's great. Good job. And it's <laughs> thank you. Funny, she made fun of him afterwards too because. She said, you should do a parody of Like a Virgin, do like Like a Surgeon or something like that. And he did exactly that. <laughs> and she kind of made fun of him for that. She was just like, that, I mean, I kind of made, come up with your own idea, but that's fine. <laughs> but actually, Like a Surgeon works well musically, too, because it's got a musical joke, if you remember. Oh, yes, the heartbeat. There's a heartbeat. Yeah, that yeah. actually works really well. Uh, well, that's actually a really fun concert. It's, you know, he's a very talented man, and the band is great. The stupid did, band did, is Did good. this happen? Did he do a million costume changes? No, because this is the Bad Idea Tour. It's probably a better idea, because I remember seeing, I saw him at Radio City, and he, for whatever reason, felt obligated to, like, wear the outfits yeah. for every song. So it really was one song, then he would leave the stage and they would show like videos, clips from like uh, his UHF movie. Yeah. <laughs> his guest appearances on stuff and The Simpsons. Yeah. And it was like 10 minutes between songs. <laughs> yeah. And then he'd come out in the fat suit and do Eat It. And then he'd go away again. I was like, yeah, I, we know, we remember the video. You can just play the stuff. <laughs> yep. Took forever. Look at that cat. There's a cat on your lap. Oh yeah, he's a sweetheart too. This is Mancha. Yeah. Oh. This is Mancha. Mancha has a teardrop because he's oh, yeah. been to prison. Oh. Yeah. For murder, you're a murderer, aren't you? You killed a guy when you went in. You picked <laughs> the biggest guy in prison so that no one would mess with you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, so I've seen Weird Al a number of times. Uh, so most of the shows, he does the costume bit where he changes into costume. Right. The Bad Idea Tour was because the premise was, who would want to see this? Me just doing originals. Me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then one tour that I saw him with, he had a classical orchestra. That's fantastic. And it was really good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did it, uh, Ema Phillips open for him? He did. And was he great? He was great. I recognized a lot of jokes, of course. Um, okay. There, because there's certain, there's one joke, I won't say the punchline. You feel free at home to look it up because you'll find it. And, but the setup is. My girlfriend got mad at me because I got out of the car and I didn't open the door for her. That's the setup. It's his mm -hmm. joke, so I won't tell you the joke, but it's uh, just, but he tells it every show I've ever seen him do. <laughs> He's got to play the hits. Yeah. He did one, I will say one joke he tells that I love. I'll just do the beginning. He goes, my father, a kind man, a good man, and a patient man walk into a bar <laughs> right and then there's a lot of material that tells me he didn't get along with his dad <laughs> <laughs> he looks like someone who wouldn't have gotten along with uh, your standard issue dad yeah yeah one thing he said that was great that he goes i've opened up for weird al a lot and one thing i know i've noticed i can say about his fans you were all bullied <laughs> <laughs> And then he does the classic emo continuing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's really, really good. Yeah, he was very funny. One of the few times before a band you don't mind seeing a comedian. Yeah, it makes sense. The band is half a comedian. Yeah, and uh, and him and Al are very good friends. You know, I've done shows with emo. 
I've actually I've done. Yeah, and he, uh, I was in a movie with him once, and he asked me for advice on how to do a scene, <laughs> which is how I know for sure he doesn't have a lot of experience. <laughs> or know who you are. My God, that's what I mean. Why ask, asking me, me? Why? I took, I gave him advice and he took the advice because it was just, he wanted to know what I thought was the right take, you know, because he was doing a, you know, a comedic take and, you know, a fast one or a slow one for this particular bit. And I gave him my opinion and that's what he did. And I was like, well, that was very nice. Fun. Yeah. I don't know that I'm right, but it was nice of him to ask me. <laughs> what was, what was the movie? The movie's called Relative Strangers with Danny DeVito Nev Campbell and um, the guy from Office Space. <laughs> okay. What's his I name? I don't know anyone's name from them. I'm, I have never watched Office Space all the way through. Oh, wow. Okay. You did not like it when you started to watch it? I uh, No, I feel like it was an opportunity thing where like I changed the channel and it was halfway over or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and in that circumstance, I was like, oh, I don't know what's happening in this movie. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It is a good movie. It's uh, it deserves its status as a cult movie. And it makes sense that it would never be that successful because it asks a lot of you, I think. But okay. Jennifer Aniston is really charming in it. Huh. I forgot she's in that, too. She's in Office Space as well. And they make huh. a jo joke about working at places like it might have been Cheesecake Factory, but I, whenever I'm at a place like a Cheesecake Factory and the, the waiter or waitress has a bunch of crap on there, like pins. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that and go, yeah. Yeah, yeah you worked at uh, Bennigan's, right? I did, but that I was, was in the very, kitchen. Was, they probably had the highest pin density of any chain. <laughs> the dumbest menu, too. Just the dumbest. It's such a dumb idea to serve everything. <laughs> Always bad. Yeah. <laughs> Always bad. You're very rarely are you going to be good at any of the things. Yeah, your menu shouldn't have a hinge. <laughs> be one, uh, be a card this big. Yeah. Now that feels like the really small menu is a modern thing, and it is yes. the right thing. It feels like uh, oh, this is a uh, you're known for the chef. Yeah. And he's like, well, I got eight things. Yeah. And they're like, can you make a ninth thing? I'm like, well, I don't know. I might fuck it up. <laughs> All right. Oh, snap. Yeah, I had such a good time in L.A. Uh, and my friend and I, I bring, I, somewhat relevant to our podcast, I went and saw Tim, Tom, 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 Tim, Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom or Tom, Tom? Tom. Tom was there. I do know a Tim, but it was Tom. Okay. And we talked about doing and analyzing Weird Al Lyrics podcast. <laughs> and we talked about doing it as a parody of this one. <laughs> and he would more or less be you. <laughs> <laughs> and the premise would be, we were talking about how much we love Weird Al, but as soon as we start talking about it, he would immediately go, this is what I don't like about Weird Al. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. What a funny idea. Uh, so, so you'd have to watch this. <laughs> yep. For it to make sense. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, if ten percent of our viewers watch, that, yeah, that'd be like a person. That'd be like one <laughs> a person would watch it. Our hope would be that it would be Bruno Mars that he would enjoy both shows. Oh yeah. Well, if anybody has the time on their hands. Yeah, I think at this point too, he'd enjoy because he knows all this stuff. Right, because he yeah. was on board from episode one. Yeah, he's into the minutia. His, I like his after the show podcast about our show. I enjoy that. <laughs> uh. And honestly, there's not a lot of analysis. He's just clearly a pure fan, which is fine. That's fine. It's fine. Absolutely, he's got a great subreddit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So I so again, we appreciate it, Bruno. Bruno. You are the man. Yeah. And uh, I already told That's her. Him. Yep, it's probably Bruno Mars. Hey, Ma hey, Bruno Mars. Is this Bruno Mars? <laughs> <laughs>
I, I can after my podcast. I texted you I'm on a podcast. Yes. <laughs> We're keeping all of this. Hi, everybody. This is my wife, by the way. It's not actually Bruno Mars. I thought it was going to be Bruno Mars. They have a similar phone number. I'll call you back. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's so bad. Yeah, we're uh, definitely keeping this because I don't edit nothing. That's for sure. All right, that's right. right. That ain't how this show works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep I keep it all, but luckily so far it's all been gold. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, Alex picked "Fallen of the Rain," and I'll be honest, I didn't remember the song at all until I listened to it again. A lot of stuff gets lost. On yeah. Cold Spring Harbor and Piano Man, there's a lot of weird, uh, not filler songs, but songs that didn't make it out of the attic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid joke. But That's you good. forget that, you know, I when I remember these songs, I'm always like, oh, I remember the dumb lyrics to some song that's not, uh, wasn't a hit. Right. And I always forget that the piano is great. Yes. On all of them. Now, didn't you think listening to this? So first of all, it is a very gorgeous song. Yeah. I felt like listening to the way he sung it and looking at the lyrics, it felt very much like this would be another Paul McCartney-esque song to me. Interesting. Felt very Paul McCartney, Wings era. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. It's, you know, how he sings it is hard to judge because he has said many times that the engineers of the record company or somebody really fucked with the speed. Like they sped it up. Oh, this album in particular? This entire album is oh. like they sped everything up. So my voice is weirdly high. Okay. In a lot of the songs. He also, I remember, I was at a concert one time and he asked if anybody owned Cold Spring Harbor. And a lot of people went, yay. And he said, I owe you all 10 bucks. <laughs> He's so mad he hates that album. <laughs> there's a lot of little weird treasures on it. And it's very rare that there's a whole good song. <laughs> like music, lyrics, the band and everything. Yeah. I don't think this is one of them, but I do think the music is very, very pretty. It is. Uh, that's a... Who said she was reminded of One Tin Soldier? Yeah, I could see that. It has like that sort of uh, fairy tale fable vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's definitely of the era. That's definitely being influenced by what was going on at the time. I like it because... That was from Billy Jack, right? One oh, Tin yeah. Soldier. Oh, interesting. I wonder if that was a synaptic connection. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. But yeah. yeah, what a weird movie Billy Jack is. I want to see it again because I remember seeing it as a kid and thinking it was badass. Yes. And I don't think it probably is. Was it yeah. William Devane? I think so. It, it, it Look, it included a guy telling another guy, I'm going to kick you on the side of your face and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty badass. <laughs> that was pretty badass. But also, it suffered from a similar thing that actually happens in Star Wars, which is you get to the penultimate battle, and the choreography is underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's funny. Just when you were a kid and you saw Star Wars and you saw the big battle between the two baddies, it resonated with you because you had bought into the movie. Yeah, but over time you're like, that's eh, kind of fun seeing Alec Guinness just kind of turn around a little bit because he's an old man. <laughs> um, <laughs> what has always bothered me, if, if I may go on a tangent, okay, <laughs> <laughs> about the Star Wars movies is they have very powerful droids. They have all the technology in the world. There's a Death Star, and yet everything comes down to a sword fight. Yeah. Everything always comes down to who learned sword fighting better. 
they and they're blowing up planets with a ray. But yeah. if you're good enough with a sword, your team will win. <laughs> yeah. And the thing that bothers me, I'm I'm amped up on this. The thing that bothers me about the Star Wars series is that are now popping up on Disney Plus is that they're all about uh, a famous Star Wars character being a bad babysitter. <laughs> it's like, where's Baby Yoda? Oh, we lost Baby Yoda. Where's Leia? Somebody took Leia. <laughs> we gotta go find Leia. That is true. You know what? Bo now, I was bothered be by the laziness of I'm enjoying the Kenobi series. I'm enjoying it because I'm just choosing to enjoy it. You know, you get to choose that. A lot of us have been doing that with Star Wars for a long time. I think. And that's cool. The one thing I wish is that one of these shows that brings back a guy like that wouldn't decide that part of the plot has to be him being disillusioned in the beginning. Because first of all, I don't buy that about Ben Kenobi, period. I buy that he suffered and that he is sad, but he's not Luke. And he shouldn't have ever foregone the Jedi way. Yeah, there's a lot of the foregoing. Like, it's, no, I don't do that anymore, kid. That doesn't make sense for his character. It doesn't make sense given what we know of A New Hope, because in A New Hope... He was absolutely still committed to the Jedi way. He never right. says to Luke, ah, listen, your dad is a Jedi. You shouldn't do that. Okay, you should. He <laughs> thinks he should from the beginning. True. Yeah. And it's, it's a very exhausted trope anyway. Yep. They're like, oh, I, I'm not a gunfighter anymore, kid. This town's going to have to figure it out without me. Yeah. You know uh, what would have made it good? Mister? Yeah. You know what would have made it good is if at the beginning of Ken uh, the Obi-Wan series, it was Vader going, I don't do that evil stuff anymore. I'm disillusioned. <laughs> I just teach at a community college. <laughs> <laughs> That's There's your story right there. I do like that they got Hayden Christensen. Mm -hmm. I do like that they're young enough that the de-aging isn't too jarring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you, Lord. It isn't like Hayden Christensen is currently 85 and they have to, in every scene, he has to just, has this much movement. <laughs> the face slides a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> They're just young enough and it still doesn't quite work, but That's it's fine. Well. What it is is they look young, but you say to yourself, but I don't remember them being that fat. <laughs> yeah oh god who was it there's somebody was it jimmy smiths who was like super clearly wearing a girdle yeah you know like oh boy i do in an interview hayden christensen said he was very happy that he'd given up on trying to stay in shape and stuff he's very clear about it he's like i'm a dad now and i made a choice yeah. and he made a very healthy healthy choice yeah, there's, there's be, I wonder if there's a like a cottage industry in L.A. now of just like personal trainers for 60 year old dudes who have to be in prequels. Yeah, here's how we get you to look good enough. Yeah, we're going to get your hips loose so you don't walk like an old man. Yeah. <laughs> and day of the shooting, you're not going to do that thing where you don't drink water. That's for the young bucks. Yeah, don't do that. Who tightened the skin. We can't have any more heart attacks on set. Yeah. What's uh, Thor, he don't do that no more. Good. I'm glad. Hemsworth is like, uh-uh. We're done with that. Great. Fucking fuck you guys. I don't need to do that. Yeah. And Thor's got enough outfit on. He doesn't have to be shirtless. Yeah. Like a tunic and a cape and a whole thing. Yeah. You know that the funny thing. the fat... cupcake, Thor. <laughs> I know when he was fat, Thor, he had to be so happy because... He didn't get out of shape. He just was allowed to be a person. Yeah, he broke even. How fucking craft services table to be the first time you ever fucking saw that guy there. <laughs> All of which is to say that we're reviewing. We love Fall Under the Rain. We do. It's pretty was soft. Of, was the point of that story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love to test your patience, friends. 
Uh, this was on uh, Cold Spring Harbor. Cold Spring Harbor, a real place on Long Island. Yeah. And he's got a picture of himself that I believe is a real mustache. I think he had a real mustache at the time. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's 80% complete. Yep. It just really is. The middle part, he's got that bald part right about here. Yeah. When the two halves don't touch. Yeah. Start over. And he's threatening a goatee, but that threatening, but not <laughs> quite. No one feels threatened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Released in 1971. Uh, why don't you start us out? Here's your first clue of the fairy tale. Once upon a time, in the land of misty satin dreams, there stood a house and a man who painted nature scenes. He painted trees, in case you didn't know what nature scenes were. <gasps> painted trees and fields and animals and streams, and he stayed. And he didn't hear the falling of the rain. Ah, ha, 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 ha. No, he didn't hear the falling <laughs> of the rain. I like this lyric, and I'll tell you what I like about it. I like that we're, we have a guy painting nature, but not seeing nature. I think that's pretty good as far as interesting. giving me an image. It's one thing that hit me right away was I like the idea of a guy painting and being artistic but missing it interesting and i have a logistically i wonder is he he's clearly not outside painting the nature scenes like you would see guys doing right in his house that's the imp that's what i think he's in his house or in his study and he might be doing what my dad did because my dad was a decent painter um, I have some of my dad's artwork around the house and he painted a lot of nature scenes from memory or books. Interesting. Yeah. So, or like, like a life magazine would have a picture of a real place. And okay. my dad would use that as an inspiration for the place he painted. Okay. So doable, not logistically out of the question. No, my dad, painted a picture of my grand this is famous in my family so not famous is what i mean to say <laughs> but uh my dad painted a picture of my grandfather in the desert with a uh, burrow and a uh and the burrow is tethered to uh like a twig and my grandpa is cooking bacon over an open fire in the desert and that was something my grandpa really did my grandpa was a bit of a hobo Huh. And uh, at one point in his life, because my grandfather, when he came to this country, uh, it was at the no Irish need apply time wow. in our country. So he lived the life of a guy who would hitch a ride on the rails for real. Like he did that. Wow. Okay. Uh, and so my dad painted the he had these images of him in the desert doing this. And it was a good uh, representation of my grandpa and a good representation of the desert and of a burrow and everything. None of those things my father saw. Huh. So it was a good artist. It was just what he knew about my grandfather. But my dad also had the very Irish quality, also Scottish and other things, but in German, my dad, of uh, self-loathing. So what he would do is he painted the entire side of our house with this one time. So our house, the side of it was an entire mural of a my grand and your grandfather cooking bacon. <laughs> wow. And an, yeah, an entire desert scape. And people in my neighborhood loved it, would stop by. And my dad looked at it one day and decided he had not done a good job and painted over it white. Wow. And then always, huh? Was he happy with the white? <laughs> that would be great if he was like, no, gray. No, that's not good either. I'm not even a good painter, painter. Might be about something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but luckily he painted, he painted multiple versions of the same thing. And I still have one, which is nice. Um, he also painted a picture of me. And so when my father said he wasn't good at po portraits, he was right. He wasn't good. Uh. At it <laughs> it's definitely looks like it's a picture of someone. Okay. Well, that's half the battle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so yeah i like 
Although, uh, is he deaf or he's, you've got a really thick house. That's the only thing that doesn't quite work for me. Because <laughs> he didn't hear the falling of the rain. No, he didn't hear the falling of the rain. Possible. We're, I guess we have to figure out. Obviously, rain is always a metaphor. Yeah. We have to figure out what it's a metaphor for. Yeah. Here's what I think I like. If I'm going to like something about the lyrics. Why not try? <laughs> After all, I got this job. Right. Uh, it doesn't start with well, um, but it does start with once upon a time. Yeah. So he's not trying to fool you. It's like, this is a fairy tale. Yeah. You know what you're in for. And then you don't freak out at misty satin dreams. Yeah. If there's any if, if you were to say what is the opposite of a phrase you would find in a Billy Joel song it would be Misty Satin Dreams <laughs> right yeah uh, to my point earlier that one of the things that I like about this is this is a different swing for him yeah the thing about that though is I think we only know that in retrospect from where we sit yeah. in 2022 when this came, this was his first album. Yeah. So if you bought this album, you would think like, oh, he's a fairy tale singer, maybe. Yeah. And I mean, I won't like this. Yeah, that's I'll, true. I'll, I'll love it. And then I'll get mad when he does uh, Big Shot. <laughs> right. Because that's not a fairy tale at all. Once a time, upon a time, there was a Big Shot. <laughs> <laughs> I think you leave your departures off the first album. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So is it a depart? Yeah. Or is this just an interesting snapshot in a singer songwriter finding himself? Right. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Which I like. Let me try this. And it, you could even say that the, one of the shames of him hating this album himself so much or being so disenchanted by disenchanted. Huh? Fairy tale. <laughs> uh, but, huh? How do you do it? I know, right? Well, that's that's why Bruno Mars loves us. <laughs> um, and one of the shames of things like that is that I like this swing. And getting dissuaded from this swing means not doing the better version of this, which is too bad. But also maybe the better version of this wasn't in there. <laughs> well, I'll say I don't think he, he fully, I don't think there's nothing here. There is no. definitely something here that is uh, shows up in later works. Yeah. And it is this idea of a person who should have seen a sign and didn't. Yes. Um, disillusionment. Yeah. Enchantment. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe it's that in the evolution of his writing, he just gets a little more down to the nitty gritty of how he really feels, which is ultimately what a lot of writers who write about themselves are ultimately going to eventually have to do yeah because this it's distant it's these hypothetical people and then progressively it's not I'm pretty mad about how i fucked up my first marriage and i'm pretty <laughs> mad about how my you know in-law stole money from me and i'm you know yeah yeah you used to have some real life experience to hang your lyrics on yeah and until you do then you just have a an imaginary painter guy a generalized feeling about it. yeah that's a good point uh in the forest green okay. lived a girl who put her hair in braids and she sang as she walked all about the wooded glades the forest green you don't like that i can tell the forest green or <laughs> glades. huh or the wooded glades yeah <laughs> she was glad when the rain came falling on her face and she sang because she didn't mind the falling of the rain. Well, you know, obviously we're juxtaposing this young lady with the painter. No, she didn't mind the falling of the rain. Will it always be the same as we recall? Does it touch you when the rain begins to fall? Now, right here, it gets to your point about what's the metaphor about. Yeah. Does it touch you when the rain begins to fall? Clearly isn't really about rain so much as it is probably about humanity or love or something. Ah, uh, but I don't want to know and I don't want to see. 
another rainy day without you lying next to me. That makes me think the rain is like problems. Yeah. The painter guy avoids uh, problems and complications in his life. The, the glade lady is fine with it. Bring on the problems. I'll figure it out and I'll yeah. sing the whole time. Yeah. Here's a here's what I think is legitimately a lyrical misstep mm. on on his part. Because you go another rainy day without you lying next to me. But up until now, it's <laughs> not personal, right? Yeah, we it's a the POV. And it's not a natural shift. No. And it, so it's it I think this is a mistake or this is um before you realize okay well then this also needs a rewrite. That's before you realize that because it's first album it, it may not have occurred that like okay well now we go look at it again and try to tidy this up because that's not the turn's not right because it's not a reveal. It'd be one thing if it was Oh, and the old man is me. <laughs> <laughs> I can let him off the hook. I have an out for him. I can pitch him this if he has a meeting about this song. Okay. You're singing the fairy tale to your girlfriend there. And then you're sort of turning to her. I mean, like, how about you? What do you think of the rain? Right? I, yeah. A song about a painter guy and a girl with the rain on her face. Now you next to me. Yeah, true. How, how, how would you and I handle this rain? Well, <laughs> we'll come back to that and I'll sing some more fairy tale first. <laughs> yep. So you could generate a scenario where this makes sense. A little reorganization. It's really not that much because it's really more doing that at the top of the second verse, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just it doesn't quite work. I'm and I'm not being super critical because Lord, it's 1971. The dude's just starting. But also, by the way, go listen to the lyrics of contemporary songs. Yeah, <laughs> the whole decades of fucking mess. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go listen to any song. Most songs are a yeah, mess. Yeah. They're really. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, slaving to the rhymes yep like look i know this doesn't make sense but it'll sound great on the radio yeah it's funny to me because what this reminds me of is a very specific prince song but of course that came out much later mm -hmm. what song that, oh once upon a time in the land of plenty uh, i see mountains i think it's called mountains uh, hi, hi. love is it's and it's similar. It's got a similar like there's this it's this magical place, but really it's just about a guy who likes a girl. Right. OK. Yeah. Well, that's fair. And the lyrics in that aren't great either, but also it's Prince singing. So who cares? Who cares? Bring yeah. it on. All right. It's it's you now. And the high upon a hill, by the way, sounds very much like a Prince lyric anyway. <laughs> High up on a hill, far away from all the dusty crowd, <laughs> is a boy with his eyes on the ground. His head is bowed. He is a fool. And his mind is filled with hopeless dreams. And he waits, but he will not see the fallen of the rain. Oh, no, he will not see the fallen of the rain. Huh. Well, I have an opinion. Oh, go finish it though. I oh, that's it. Oh, okay. I don't always be the same as we recall. Yeah, I do think it's weird for him. You know the the note you get most as a writer is show don't tell. Yeah, I think it's weird to just say like he is a fool. <laughs> like oh, okay. I think the whole verse was explaining to us that he was a fool, using the metaphor of the rain that he's not seeing. So it's a little bit of a sledgehammer to say. <laughs> yeah. He is a fool. And his mind I, is filled with hopeless dreams. I like that maybe this implies, I think we're meant to think 
He'd like to see the falling of the rain. He'd like that, but he's not going to. Right. And he's probably in his own way. I don't think anyone's keeping him from seeing it. It's more that he's in his own way. I wonder if he isn't like a trust fund kid. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you buy into the idea that the rain is problems and the difficulties in life, yeah. then I think it's relevant that he's high up on a hill, far away from all the dusty crowd. Oh yeah. Okay. Rich kid. Right? He's a rich kid staring at the ground. Yeah. Cool mind full of hopeless dreams and he will not see the problems yeah um i don't entirely understand I feel the like is too dense to understand what the rain is supposed to be yeah well the one lyric that jumps out at me that doesn't in this one the one i don't really understand how it works is his head is bowed because yeah. generally when we think of that kind of a thing, his head is bowed is one of two things usually. It's something has brought you low, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like a king has, his, a king's head is bowed is more is the king was defeated. Mm -hmm. Or like to, if you said his head is bowed and you had it in a religious context, it's somebody supplicating themselves to say Jesus or whoever, it's, it's somebody doing that. Right. I don't understand it in this context because I don't think he thought that out. That I do think is a mistake, really. Yeah, I agree because, you know, a boy with his eyes on the ground, much more open to interpretation. Yeah. But if his head is bowed, then yeah, it's a, uh, like you said, a gesture of supplication or humility. Yeah. Something like that. But there's apparently no one else there. <laughs> yeah. So. With his eyes on the ground, the head, his head is bowed. It's almost just like you're explaining to me how his head would be so that his eyes could be on the ground, which you don't <laughs> need to tell me that. Yeah, no, we, we, we know how that works. Like, as if you said his eyes are on the ground. Not literally. He's looking at the ground. <laughs> his eyes aren't literally on the ground. That doesn't make sense. He's looking that way. It's an idiomatic expression. Yeah. I hope you didn't think that he had lost his eyes. This isn't that sort of song. Yeah, I maybe I'll write that song, but that's not this. This guy's eyes are fine. That was all, I think, in the original cut. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got studio notes. He's like, uh, most of us get it. He goes, oh, I don't know if you entirely get it. I'm going to keep that head bowed thing. Nothing confusing about that. <laughs> Does it touch you on the rain? Yes, yeah, a little. I do think, all joking aside, or, you know, why all joking aside? more joking uh but so his first guy painter didn't hear the falling of the rain yeah lady didn't mind the falling of the rain kid uh will not see the falling of the rain kid will not see well there is a nice flow there flow yep. rain hmm? mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and he does so in the last verse he does try to tie it up which is good he's making an effort to complete the poem and I will say, this does feel like a first album in that sense, because this is absolutely a poem and not yeah. just lyrics to a song, which eventually, economy of writing, you realize that, well, for songs, you write it this way. And for poems, you write it a little different. So that's kind of neat, by the way. That does make it a good song to visit as far as like different kind of Billy Joel writing, because here he tidies it up. He says, so now the boy becomes the man who sits and paints all day. And I bet when he so wrote that, he thought we were way we surprised when we heard that. <laughs> I'm going to blow their minds. But the girl with the braids in her hair has gone away. She's just gone. Well, and that's a bummer. And it seems that time has brought things to an end. Nothing's changed because you can't stop the falling of the rain. I don't like, well, so, and it seems that time has brought things to an end. Then um, what okay. should have happened is nothing's there. Not even the fallen of the rain would have been a nice close in the lyrics. Ah. Because if you tell me it's come to an end, 
because you can't stop the falling of the rain. Well, then it hasn't because it's still the falling of the rain. It's really what you're saying. It's it's cyclical, not that it's over. It's very confusing in terms of, okay, so the boy becomes the man. Yeah. And the girl, what? Because the first two characters set up are the old man painting or the man painting. Yeah. And the girl with the braids. Yeah. So there's been a time shift now. The boy who we just met becomes the man who we've yeah. known for a while. Yeah, well, what could have tied it up better? I mean, honestly, the, this is almost Jim and Alex rewrite Billy Joel lyrics. But I mean, he forced our hand. Because <laughs> you could almost fix it by putting a girl or implying a pretty girl in the painting at the beginning and mm -hmm. have the girl become the memory, right? Right. Maybe that'd be too on the nose, cause, but you weren't surprising anybody anyway. <laughs> so, and uh, by the way, that is very 70s. There's a lot of cyclical 70s songs like Cats in the Cradle. Oh, sure. There's a lot of songs about where at the very beginning, it's the one thing, like there's the one in the, the taxi cab song about the girl and the lady and he's driving it to he he uh she was gonna be an actress i was gonna learn to fly she left home to see the bright lights i left home to see the sky oh, and now she this. and in the end she is an actress or the rights of that song whatever it is yeah <laughs> in the end she is an actress she's acting happy um uh, and no, i that. I'm driving around in my cab getting high, is what he says. Right. So. Um, it does follow a structure that you see <laughs> uh, in a lot of country music songs, not the good ones, but the radio ones. It's a very popular format to be for a dude to go like, when I was a young boy, my dad said this. And then the second verse, now that I'm a grown man, I say this to my son. And then the third verse is, I died and went to heaven and Jesus and or St. Peter said this thing to me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. It's a, you can't believe how many songs uh, follow that trajectory. Yeah. But here's my problem. Yeah. Is there a relationship in this song that we're talking about between the boy and the girl? Well, that's a good... If there is, we shouldn't have met the old man first. Yeah. So I think if you start with the boy, start first verse, boy with the, the bowed head. Second yeah. verse, the girl. You know they got to meet. Yeah. Then you, you, you have to cut a verse. And it's already pretty short. So the boy becomes the man who sits and paints all day. He didn't he didn't have the right attitude towards the rain. So the girl left. Yeah. Or died. Yeah. The song sort of implies that she died because time has brought things to an end. Yeah. But because we met the old man first, I don't eh. Yeah, I don't know either because I'm not in my impression of this song is that it's about a relationship that never was. Fair. That works the best for me as far as how the song is written. Yes. Uh that what we're talking yeah, about couldn't, they couldn't agree on how to feel about the rain. Yeah. <laughs> I almost think he it's about a guy who never even took the proper swing. That I, the girl right. wherever she's gone the closest it was is that she would remember that they talked once and it would be something. Did you know he had a crush on you? And she'd go, oh, no, I had no idea. Yeah. All he talked about is how shitty the rain was. <laughs> so I was like, I like the rain. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like it's it's much more melancholy than the failed relationship. It's the like unrequited relationship that never even had a chance yeah two ships 
Yeah. The because, old two ships problem. Yeah, the old two ships. And here's the question. So you've got two ships, right? Right. And then you go on a long journey. And then both ships, sails break, and and you rebuild the two shields, sails on the two ships. No, forget it. I think they're still the two ships is what I'm saying. The two ships of Theseus. Theseus. That's right. <laughs> that so really? now, yep, <laughs> and now we have four ships of Theseus. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, jokes for no one. <laughs> that should be my album. <laughs> jokes for no one. Ah, that's actually a really good title for a fucking album. Jesus. Steal it. Steal I, it. I like this song, I will say. It's worth revisiting. It's got a lot wrong with it, but it's got a lot of, like, young artist just starting out wrong with it. That's all. Yeah, and it's a... Uh, Lesson he certainly took to heart. Yeah. And the piano playing is flawless. Beautiful piano playing. Bad lyrics. Yeah. You could just listen. Like, it's good enough music that if he had released, released an instrumental version of it, it'd be worth listening to. It's very he could, pretty. He now has the skills and ability. He should just write good lyrics. Yeah, that's true. Makes it about like uh, giving advice to some jamoke. Yeah. Named Anthony. That would be funny if he started over and was like, "I'm gonna re-record it with better lyrics." <laughs> and there's then apparently, uh, I didn't look at it, but there's video of him playing this song in 2005. Oh. Some, like NYU Q and A thing, uh, playing it and making fun of it at the same time. So, find <laughs> that. Lord, I like every interview I see of him. He's just such a lovable cuss at this point in his life. <laughs> every time he's on Colbert, he and he's been on Colbert a few times. He was on Colbert's old show. Yeah. He's been a late show and has a good sense of humor about himself, understands his place in the world now. I can't think of many artists who uh will like tell you that you know they'll tell you their five favorite songs of theirs and then also tell you what songs stunk yeah and he won't say like it's flawed or i was a different person he's just like that song stinks <laughs> why did i do it? that whole album yeah you know, 10 bucks <laughs> yeah yeah he's it's great uh so when we saw the bare naked ladies one of the things that ed said is he'd like i'd like to give a special uh, i thank you all for coming uh, I'd like to particularly thank f friends who got dragged here reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because they know who they are. They're the bare naked ladies. There's a set of fans who yep. will never abandon them. And there's a bunch of people who, for whatever reason, don't understand that A, One Week is a great song, regardless of what you think. <laughs> but that, too, it's not their only song. <laughs> yeah. And I think just when you say that, those people who got dragged there feel like they belong there now. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, he mentioned us. Great. Yep. He We're they in. tend to win people over. It's funny they can they're, you know they're no Billy Joel, but they continue to sell out stadiums. They continue to make a ton of money going on the road. God bless them. Like they got no problems, and they can they're doing a different thing. They keep releasing new music whether you want them to or not. <laughs> And I like their new albums. It's just funny because you know they're not going to be on the radio because yep. they're not in their 20s. Yep, they must know that. Yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, we just like doing it. Yep, and also that they are also fully aware that they're very lucky that they got Big Bang Theory. Because that <laughs> fucking thing bought every one of them a house. Oh yeah. Every one of them got a damn house. Bless. Now, I want to say a little bit about my clue for you really quick. Oh, Okay. I want to preface this by saying I like her. Okay. I like the job she's doing. This is not part of the clue. No, I like the job she's doing. So I'm not making fun of her. Gotcha. But, but that's I, it's also not a clue. No, I just want to say that because I know people give her a hard time. I'm not one so. of those. I am a liberal. Uh huh. And also I think she's very pretty. Yeah. Agreed on all points. Yeah. But uh but that is huh? That is, she's got my vote. That's right. She probably did get your vote, right? No. She's not in my she's not in my district. Gotcha. She's gotcha. in the Bronx. Right. 
Mm. Famously in the Bronx, actually. Famously in the Bronx, which is not part of the clue either. No. Based on your reaction. No, it's your not. Your eyes always light up if I get close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like, no, let's, what else do I know about Alexandria? Yeah. Cortez. This is a, that, that is a, yeah. Yeah, she's a bartender. That's right, she is. Um, although it's the waitress who's practicing politics. You got it. <laughs> she's a waitress power practicing politics. Bartender waitress. Yeah, so uh, big shot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Billy Joel's other nickname. That's right. The, this the is big a, shot. That's right. <laughs> uh, yep, that's what oh, that is. Pretty. That was pretty easy, right? That was pretty easy, I think. But I found that's it very I eliminated the Bronx. I was trying to remember if there were any Bronx songs. Yeah, yeah. It was. I don't think I've ever clued Piano Man before. I don't think I've done that. It's nicely done. How do I mean, you feel? I like it because I thought, oh, that's a, a fun end to that song. Because just having a guy in the Navy, no. Yeah. Having Davy Jones in an episode where he's wearing a Navy hat. No. <laughs> I None that, of that sounded good to me. But AOC sounded like, well, it's a good clue. And if for some reason you don't get it for a while, that'll be funny. Yeah. But it'll also be likely that you'll just get it. <laughs> I, maybe my favorite part of clue time is uh, you uh, analyzing clue time. <laughs> <laughs> analyzing the decision all the decision making around the clue yeah <laughs> making it seem like i put a lot of time into it i think bruno is gonna have another subreddit <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm gonna tell you the song now and then you'll do the clue or the okay. trivia trivia don't okay. do a clue but i decided to go spring harbor too just for fun right turn around Turn around. Okay. I, I can't have, hear it in my head. Hmm. I don't even know if it's a good song. We'll find out. We'll find out. There's only one way. That's right. Just to wait a week and go, oh, I better listen to that. <laughs> Please don't expose my methodology. But I uh, I don't know. I just, I enjoyed this song and it occurred to me that, well, Spring Harbor, we haven't looked at a lot and it's, the other thing I was going to do is I was going to make us analyze a song from his uh, first band just for fun. But <laughs> um, well, let me think, do I know the title of any song? So it's Hour of the Wolf, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Amplifier Fire. <laughs> and I looked it up because I was curious. I was like, oh, I better make sure that he actually wrote the songs for that group. Oh yeah, I he to did. Cobra. He did. They didn't co-write. No, I he find it cobra. very funny that you won't find any of those lyrics on BillyJoelLyrics.com, his official website. <laughs> oh, you have to go to Attila dot GeoCities. Yeah, man. If you're ever at a Q and A where you get to ask him to play something, it would be fun to just go. Can you on on piano? I know you can't do the real version. Honestly, could you at least play one Attila song? I think he'd enjoy somebody saying that, and I wonder if he could. I wonder if he could. He would know like a, a snatch of the lyrics, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Such a funny moment in his life. Because you look at this. This is, you know, Spring Harbor. You're like, he's just figuring himself out. Attila, he ain't even close to figuring oh, yeah, himself no. out. He's just copying stuff. Yeah, at that point, he's like, my goal is to be famous and somehow... <laughs> right here's a swing yeah oh yeah here's a misguided swing <laughs> so yeah turn around from spring harbor uh and uh by the way i will link for anybody who wants to see it to uh the last link i'm gonna link to still billy joel to me so you can see that weird owl thing oh, where right. he's very mean right not his thing by the way billy uh no, Billy Joel's thing might be being mean. No, his is just being cranky. Not Weird Al's thing to be mean. He did it every now and then, and it comes off odd. Hmm. Yeah. 
Because you don't expect that from him. You don't expect him to be like, to do a song that's a parody of the Rolling Stones where he goes, fuck the Rolling Stones. And you're like, what? I didn't <laughs> believe he did that. Did you listen to uh, yeah, You May Be Right? With an ear, I emailed you. Oh, I meant to. <laughs> so no. I never noticed before, but for some reason I was listening to it and I was like, oh, this is very much a Mick Jagger impression. <laughs> the whole song is... He's trying to sound like the Rolling Stones. Yeah. You know, and I've heard it enough that I can see what you mean, even having that, but I, I'll re listen to it tonight. Um, yeah, yeah for sure. Do. He, uh, de- well, and it's funny that he did it in that song because in that song, what's he trying to do is he's making something of a statement. Right. Right. It's like, oh, I'm a rock and roll guy now. Yeah, I'm, I'm hardcore rock and roll now. So it who's, makes sense. Who's the best example of that right now? Yep. Here in the late 70s. Yeah, which is funny to think that the your best example is a guy who wasn't even from that decade, but just still killing it. <laughs> still killing it. Yeah, not so much anymore. No, busy recovering from COVID. Yeah. Oh, he, <laughs> he got COVID too, didn't he? He got the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Sorry, I, man. I, uh, I also had the COVID and it was fine, but. I didn't love it. Yeah. Mm, did not love it. You had it early on, right? I didn't know. I never had it. Oh, nice. Good job. I'm keep, one of the few. Keep doing that. I'm going to keep doing it and keep wearing my mask. It's weird to me that because I know you do go out a fair amount. A ton. I'm on the subway four days a week. Yeah. That's and, pretty. Uh, yeah. Somehow. Pretty impressive. But you're still masking up. Still masking. Still masking yeah. at work. Are New Yorkers masking a lot, or is it going away? It's going away, but it's still pretty ubiquitous on the subway. Okay. Because it's still mandatory on the subway. No one's there to enforce it. But yeah. Somehow saying that. Although I can't... The youngs, the youngs are starting to not wear their masks. Yeah. Because their faces are pretty. <laughs> I was on, uh, I got on a damn airplane going from Oakland to Los Angeles and, uh, they make an announcement that you need to wear a mask and not even an exaggeration to say, I'm pretty sure the person making the announcement wasn't wearing a mask. There were, (laughs) yeah, there was so many, like, I understand people are not going to always comply, particularly in the terminal itself because they feel like they're far enough away from people. But now there were, on the plane itself, not every um, stewardess was wearing a mask. Yeah. So so now you really can't ask me to if I don't want to. I wore mine because I was at, because I thought, well, I think we're supposed to. Yeah. And I it's don't. Not hard. Yeah. And there are things you're supposed to do. That's how well life works. The life is filled with things you're supposed to do. Yeah. That is the thing. These people who they love the freedom and they think the freedom means uh, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Which is not freedom. No. It's chaos. Yeah. Anyway, let's, I don't want to get all political right before the trivia question. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, which is a little bit lazy today. Okay. Um, very funny. You love the song Christy Lee. Yeah. It says his, her name a million times in that song. That's right. It's, uh, she breaks the heart of a saxophone player who also has a name. What's his name? Oh, um, Bobby G. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Um, what's Christy Lee, Christy Lee, um, um, uh, Clarence Clemens? <laughs> uh, it's probably not Clarence Clemens. No. Wouldn't you, like this, wouldn't you like the song better if it was Clarence Clemens? <laughs> I like the video good. better. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like Clarence Clemens. No longer amongst us, Clarence Clemens. He is nope. gone. COVID. Yep. Gone to play saxophone for God, according to people who have a weird theology. Oh, let's see. Let me think and not click on things. Hmm. <laughs> Let me think. So broke the heart of a, you say, a saxophone player, huh? 
Yeah, yeah. I remember she stayed in the saxophone player and it breaks his heart. Wow. He's never the same. Uh, well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't see the name. I like that you got those extra reflective glasses at Warby Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, put uh, more reflective coating on it. Oh, you son of a gun! The man's name you don't remember, right? So he doesn't yeah, have it. it, it yeah, man's name you don't remember. Was that the answer? Yeah. Oh, son of a gun! You, that's pretty <laughs> great. It's oh, a good old trick question. That is fantastic. <laughs> you know what's great? This is how dumb I am. Sometimes I'm like looking at the Larrys. I'll admit I was cheating. <laughs> Pull the curtain back on my subtlety. Well, the curtain was back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and right here, you're like curtains Chris, are at the dry cleaners. Christy Lee, Christy Lee. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm reading the lyrics. I'm like, I cannot see his name. Yeah. I can't. You're uh, just scanning for a capital letter <laughs> that wasn't there. Uh, I don't think that's lazy at all. That was a delightful question. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean. You did it. Yeah, great job. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christy Lee, Christy Lee. I do like that song. And I, I, I think I came to like it because of our show, too. Oh, yeah, interesting. Because it's one of the songs that was like, oh, well, let's look at this song. And because we do that a lot. We're like, yeah, hey, Lord, I think we talked about Big Shot, right? <laughs> we did. There are so many times when I'm picking out a song that I was like, I really wish we hadn't talked about this song yet so i could just pick it <laughs> but one of these days i am gonna pick it but it's not today obviously i picked turn around one of these days one of us is gonna crack and we're gonna analyze how, the fact that you and i didn't start to fire that's gonna happen it's gonna happen eventually we're gonna break and i don't know how much analysis you can put into that one? It might be, well, I don't know. It could either be a five minute deal or it could be a two parter. Yeah, I think we got to agree. Oh. I think we agree ahead of time. Whoever picks it, it's fine. Whoever picks it. But when we do that episode, let's just agree to be really pedantic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> get really deep in the weeds on that. <laughs> I feel like it'll be a lot of. Uh, us asking each other now what uh, was that historical event <laughs> right who's that person ah it's a baseball guy all right okay <laughs> well, was that a real guy or a made-up guy okay i don't remember the stark weather homicides oh. cool. it'll be us googling <laughs> right maybe they'll sponsor that one yeah oh shit yeah i bet you they will if they don't we can get bing <laughs> right everybody you did so good listening to this oh good job good job everyone and especially bruno mars next episode we're going to talk about turn around turn around and i i promise you we will eventually get to it 